And I'm very excited to talk about butterflies today. Um, and uh, we have about 10 to share with you. Um, butterflies are Bella's favorite, so mm -hmm. I know she's excited. Um, but just for future recording purposes, um, my name is Sarah and I'm a photographer. And we're gonna share a lot of pictures from the world today that I took in my travels. Mm -hmm. And this is my niece, Bella. And Bella is my travel partner a lot of the time. And uh, she's gonna tell us a lot of fun facts about butterflies. We learned a lot today doing mm -hmm. some research on them. So we can't wait to show you all of these beautiful butterflies. Um, and we're showing you butterflies from the Americas today. Uh, so that's no North and South America. And I'm gonna start and share my screen to get us going here. Give me one second. This is always the fun part where you see all of my screen for a second mm -hmm. and I need to get all set up. There we go. Perfect. All right. So last week we were in the United States and we're gonna be in the United States for just one butterfly. I have only one picture of a butterfly from the United States. I've seen a lot more and we're gonna see some soon as the summer months come, but I did see a butterfly in Chicago last summer, which is right where my mouse is, Chicago, Illinois. I used to live there. Um, and I went and visited last summer and saw this beautiful butterfly. What kind of butterfly is that? I think a lot mm -hmm. of people might know what that is. But Bella, why don't you tell us a little bit about? Yeah, this, this is this is a monarch butterfly, which is one of the most common butterflies, um, especially in the U.S. I believe. Um, the way you can tell this is a female butterfly and the way monarch butterfly and the way you can tell them apart is the males have thinner veins and the veins are actually what you see the the lines on the wings they call them veins so these ones are a little thicker so that's how we know it's a female and also the males have two distinct black dots on their bottom wings um actually that goes across the board for all butterflies ever so if you're ever wondering if it's a male or female that's how you'll know and this one's on a beautiful echinacea flower, mm -hmm. which I love. All right, we're going to go back to Brazil for a few more butterflies, which is in South America. We saw, what did we see in Brazil? We saw birds from Brazil mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. We saw some toucans and parrots and fun birds. But today we're going to see a few butterflies that are in Brazil. And this first one is called the queen swallowtail. Um, so actually, I can't really tell her if this is male or female, but the name queen, unlike with bees and other um, animals, doesn't have anything to do with it being male or female. It's just the, the name, actually. So both males and females are called queen swallowtails. Um, and when these are caterpillars, they eat milkweed. What is milkweed, Bella? <laughs> <laughs> Good it's question. such a funny name, isn't it? It's a plant and a flower too, or just a plant? I think it's just a plant. Well, I think it has flowers on it. Kind of looks like that. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe he's feeding on milkweed. <laughs> but it has a milky-like substance that come out. And all the things the caterpillars eat are to later help them um, help them be safe, stay safe from predators. So actually the milkweed makes them poisonous later on, as well as other things that they eat. What's this beauty? This one, we don't know. <laughs> it's surprisingly <laughs> hard to find butterflies with just searching their colors into Google. Um, so we couldn't find this one, but we know it's a part of the calicor species. Um, but that's about it. So maybe one of you know what kind of <laughs> butterfly this is. Otherwise, it's a beautiful 
orange, white, and black. Exactly. White. That's what, when you, when you Google butterflies, that's usually what you find is it's a black with orange stripe butterfly mm -hmm. with no name. So um, that made the research a lot of fun. Um, but I took this one in um, a place called Paranopolis, um, beautiful place in Brazil. And there are lots of flowers and lots of butterflies. And this one just matched its flower that it was on. So I love this one. And this one, um, this is actually, I didn't get permission from my sister to show her hands. I hope she doesn't mind. Just kidding. Um, I know she doesn't mind. This butterfly just showed up and popped on to her hand and then her, her phone. So. Um, this was just as we were walking around um, and this beautiful butterfly came and it's another one we don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. We promise we know all the rest of the butterflies. We don't know what this is called. We tried, we tried and we tried and we weren't able to get that. So get the name. Maybe you guys can name it. Give the yeah. butterfly a name. Give this butterfly a name. If, if you were to name this butterfly, what would you name it? You can write that in the chat. Anything you like. Guess he wants to talk on the phone, maybe. Hmm? He wants to talk on the phone. Okay. Oh, Android. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're on okay. the same wavelength, Janet. Um, so this is a beautiful, beautiful butterfly um, that's even more beautiful on the inside. Um, but what is this called, Bella? These are called blue morpho butterflies. And the reason that they're called blue is because of their beautiful inside. Blue insides. So their outsides are very, very camouflage, brown, kind of not boring because they're really beautiful, but this is the inside of the blue morpho, which Lucy was asking about a little while ago. Um, beautiful, beautiful butterflies. And these are abundant um, in um, Costa Rica and Brazil. So um, you probably saw the map in between here um, because I saw one of these butterflies in um, Brazil first, and then when I went to Costa Rica this last spring, I saw a bunch of these. So they were all over. And the reason that they look like that on the outside um, is so they can camouflage away from predators. And also, Elijah said that some butterflies have patterns that look like eyes on their wings also to scare predators away. And look at Just this. Just like this one. Um, and this is the same. It just has more of these eye-like patterns on it. Um, another thing about the blue morphos, their, their wingspan is quite large and so you can notice them by they have a very slow and bumpy flight pattern. So as they fly around it's rather slow and a little bit bumpy. Um, we have a couple of names. We have uh, Android. Lucy says breathtaking. I think you were just saying the the picture was, um, and yellow spotted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really, really, and you just can't, you don't even expect it. Look at this one, you can mm -hmm. actually see the little um, body, little, little body um, but you wouldn't expect it. And then all of a sudden they open up and they're this beautiful blue. Mm -hmm. All right, we're moving on. And we're gonna be in Costa Rica for the rest of the trip. So these butterflies are all from Costa Rica. And this is the tiger, this is called a tiger longwing. Um, these butterflies feed on passion vines and everything they eat, again, I said this before, but everything they eat is purposely so that later when they um, become butterflies that they're poisonous. Um, and these butterflies live for about nine months as adults, if they're in the right habitat or natural. And these look a little different than the first ones um, that we, I showed you. Um, they actually have bright evolved over time. And so um, 
they don't look exactly the same, but they're the same type of butterfly. Um, so they just kind of genes and time yeah. and mating just change. They all look a little unique perfectly to themselves. Do that again. A little technical difficulty here. Stand by. And I'm pretty sure as well that nine months for an adult butterfly was a little longer than, than normal. Mm. Um, yeah, like the blue morphos live from the egg to death only about 115 days. Yeah, so that's not even, not even <laughs> a year. Exactly. Not even close to a year. That's like three months. Mm -hmm. So... So these are all that beautiful tiger long wing. And also probably get their name from the tiger like stripes, mm -hmm. and the orange and the white. Especially the first ones, they were really uh, tiger, tiger like. Look at this beauty. These ones are called ruby spotted swallowtail. Um, these also have like, they have ones like this and then ones that look a little different. Um, but their wingspan is about two to four inches. Um, they eat flower nectar as most butterflies do. And the caterpillar feeds on trees in the citrus family. Fun fact. I like citrus too. <sighs> if I were a butterfly, maybe I'd look like this. And Kaisa and Emily asked if that was pink on the wing. Yeah, it is. I think that's where they get the um, the ruby ruby name mm -hmm. from it. The little the spot yeah. of ruby ruby spotted. And this one's the same, right? Yeah, I believe so. So obviously a little different, but um, still the same type of. Of butterfly. Mm -hmm. This one looks a little more ruby with the red as opposed to purple, like a like a ruby gem. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, they seem to have extra long antennae. Is that true? Butterflies in general? Is that what you're asking, Emily and Kaisa? Or the or the or ruby, the ruby spotted. spotted. I'll give you a second to. Uh, that answer. All right, here we got an, uh, what is this called? That's a funny name. It's called a red cracker. Red cracker. Um, the reason they have this name is because the male makes a cracking so sound to um, mark their territory. territory. And the way the females, they lay their tiny white eggs in a chain up to a dozen under a leaf. So, yeah. How old do they get? Well, I think it depends on the butterfly, as we were just saying. The blue morpho is only about three months um, and then the other one that was the tiger, mm -hmm. right? The tiger long wing is nine months, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you said? So I think they, they probably all live up to a year, but, um, some live a little longer than others. Yeah, it just depends. All right. What's this one, Bella? Um, did we figure this one? Oh, I don't know if we did. No, I don't think we were able to find this one either. So maybe this <laughs> can be another one that you guys name. Well, we did find it, but no one has been able to identify it. So actually, this one looks a little more rare. Yeah. Um, some of these are just not like the monarchs and stuff or blue morphos or butterflies that people commonly think of. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Maybe this was a rare, rare butterfly that you got to see. Well, 
I was very lucky. There were a lot of beautiful butterflies. Um, about how many eggs survive? Hmm, interesting. That's a good question. Um, I do know, I did go to a um, butterfly sanctuary when I was in Costa Rica and um, they were actually saving the eggs. I mean, they have, they have a lot of, they lay a lot of eggs, obviously the 12, the, the dozen of um, eggs, but they were actually saving them. They were picking, the humans were picking them off of the leaves so that the predators wouldn't get them. Mm, where I was when I went to I, some of these I got not in the sanctuary and some I did get in the sanctuary um but uh yeah yeah did actually a, yeah I, I got the answer to that where at least for the monarch because it always comes up the most common only about 10 percent of their eggs survive however the the dozen is in batches, so they actually lay hundreds and hundreds of eggs, but wow. it's in dozens. Mm. And then 10% of the hundreds survive. So basically it would be like one to two of every dozen yeah. survives. And Lucy named this one Blutiful. Blutiful. I like that. Blutiful. Um, I know, isn't that a fun fact, Lucy? Never knew that either. Which one is this? These are glasswing butterflies. Can you guess why they're they're called that? <laughs> or or better, can you guess why their wings look like that? Or what's a helpful reason that their wings look like that? Looks like an antique stained glass window. It does. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because there's not a lot of color behind this one, but when there is, the color picks up in their wings so they can turn into different colors, basically, like a um, chameleon. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. I think Kaisa got it right, huh? Yeah. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's to protect them. So like, Sarah was saying when they're, if they're behind a green leaf, they would blend right in with the green leaf, therefore making them more safe. Yeah. Yeah, Lucy, for camouflage. Yeah. And kind of the same thing with this one, too. Mm -hmm. What's this one called? This is called a zebra mosaic butterfly. Um, yeah, just like even in this image, you can tell how it's like camouflaged well into the the natural colors of nature, the trees, wood, that brownish color. Yeah. Um, and they, these are actually funny, as we know, most butterflies fly around, but they do have little legs. And <clears throat> the zebra mosaics actually will walk around every once in a while um, underneath trees, the shade of trees. They will walk around and slightly flutter their wings. So I thought that was really silly. <laughs> Because I don't think I've ever seen a butterfly walk before. I don't think I have <laughs> Only when they're like landed on a tree like this, but yeah. And it is this, the way that this one does camouflage. You're right, Lucy, is because it has uh, stripes on its wings and it just like this one's camouflaging into the tree because it looks like the tree bark, so. So um, those are all the butterflies I had to show you today, but I have a little special bonus surprise of something else that I saw in Costa Rica that I thought you guys might all enjoy. And here it is. That is a frog. <laughs> and this frog is actually sleeping. You might not be able to see it um, on your screen, but he actually has his eyes just a teeny bit open. And um, the guide, I, I saw this at the sanctuary, the butterfly sanctuary I was at, and um, he said, he's sleeping. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, his eyes are closed. <laughs> 
So what kind of frog is this, Bella? This is a red-eyed tree frog. Yeah. Um, these frogs feed on tiny insects and, um, oh, when they're tadpoles in the water, they feed in tiny insects. And then once they are a little bigger, they go and live in the trees. Yeah, Elijah got it, red-eyed tree frog. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it was, it felt like he was posing for me. I was, I couldn't even believe I got this photo because he just kind of like sat there and I was like, all right. And I didn't even have a zoom lens for this one. I just had my little, my, my regular camera lens and uh, was close enough to him to get this close to him. So do you know why the blue why they have blue under their legs. I don't know. I think it's just the color hard, of them. Yeah. The color of them. It is interesting actually when they're when they're small, they're actually brown and then this color develops as they grow up. But I think it's just um similar to other um wait, this frog isn't poisonous, right? Mm -hmm. No. So never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lucy was just asking. Yeah, it's not poisonous. Yeah, no. But this one is. Mm -hmm. What kind of? This is a frog is this? tropical poison dart tree frog. Um, so another tree frog, but it's a tropical, of course, and poison dart tree frog. These frogs live from about three to 15 years. It's kind of a big gap. Yeah. Um, and what I was going to say before, which was not true about the other frog, but is true about this frog, is their bright colors and their intense um, colors warn uh, predators that they are poisonous or people, I guess, too. And they eat just like the butterflies, right? Mm -hmm. They eat things that um, make them poisonous. Mm -hmm. It's a really uh, interesting way to keep yourself safe, huh? Yeah. And they also, um, this, their poison, this type of frog, their poison can kill up to 10 grown men. So it's no joke. Yeah. But what I did hear when I was um, looking at these frogs in Costa Rica is that in order for them to poison you, you have to have an open wound. Mm, yeah. So it has to be able to, it has to go into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they're, they're very poisonous, um, but I got very nervous. So I was like, uh, should I even be near this thing? Mm -hmm. And he said, they, they, you know, unless you have a wound, they can't hurt you. Um, how do the frogs survive? Um, and do they bite? I don't know. I don't know if they bite. I think they're poisonous by touch. So I think if by you, tongue. yeah, and I think if you touch them, uh, they're poisonous. But we're gonna find that one out because I'm really interested in that question as well. Yeah, yeah, they can. So if they if they do feel threatened, they will um, bite you. Oh. So don't make a. So maybe that's anatomy. how the poison would go into yeah. you if you didn't have an open wound. But it's, it's um, very rare that that would happen. Yeah. So. And we have one last frog for you. This one's my favorite. This is my favorite too. <laughs> it has a couple of names, but our favorite was Blue Jeans Frog. And as you can guess, it's called this because it looks like it's wearing a pair of jeans. <laughs> Little pants. Um, and the other name for it is strawberry poison. And again, it's a dart tree frog. And these frogs are very territorial. And they are obviously poisonous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it, Meredith. We can call him Levi. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Levi jeans, the Levi mm -hmm. blue jeans frog. Fantastic. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, Kaisa and Emily asked, do they spray you with poison? I'm going to look that up. We're going to look it up. But I, I do think that 
again, it might be just touching them. You definitely have to have an open wound for the, for the poison to go in as far as humans go. Um, but yeah, they would have to bite you therefore injecting you with venom. But it's really rare that they would do that to a human. So they're likely just uh, doing that to protect themselves, I'm sure, with uh, predators and... Mm -hmm. Or if you bit the frog too. Yeah, I might bite <laughs> the frog. <laughs> uh, we have another question from Kaisa and Emily. Who is the genes frog territorial against? Other frogs or... Um, I believe some birds, lizards... Are the um, the predators you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who they're territorial against. They're predators, and um, yeah, we're gonna find that out. Good questions. We're learning a lot today. Ramona, do you have a uh, frog stuffy? <laughs> I bet you do, of course. <laughs> How do they survive when eating poisonous butterflies? I don't know that they are, um, they eat butterflies. No. No. I think if anything ate a butterfly, it would be at least sick, a poisonous one. Oh yes, the feedback frog. I remember that frog. Oh, that's so funny. All right. Any other questions? Well, usually I've been teasing up Eliza. the um I've been teasing up the next topic, but I haven't decided yet what next week's topic is going to be. So I'll announce that in the next couple of days in my email that I send out. Um, and I'll let you know then, but this has been really fun as always, you know, this is just about um, bringing some smiles to you and uh, giving you the chance to um, take a break from your day and uh, go on an adventure with us while we're um, stuck in home or stuck at home and uh, I really appreciate you guys coming every week this is so much fun and it's really filling me with joy um, and I've really been enjoying uh, looking through the old photos of my trips because it brings me back to times when I could travel um, which will happen again I know um, but I really appreciate you guys being with, here with me and, um, and us and uh, learning together. We're learning a lot. Um, and I look forward to next week, uh, same time. Um, and again, I'll let you know um, what that topic is. And if you want to get on my newsletter, just go to the, my website, which is projectwonderfulwith2ls.com and uh, just sign up for my uh, newsletter, which it goes out every Friday. And if you sign up now, you can get a free note card. And it's a King Penguin from our first episode. So um, come on over and sign up and, uh, and we'll uh, see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.